Hello and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery, a video channel about making all things beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka and you can find me elsewhere online as A Sour Telling and links for this video as usual are in the show notes here down below on YouTube. So this video has been requested by my viewers and it's a video tutorial for how I sew buttons onto my hand knitted garments. As you might be aware, I'm quite fond of wearing cardigans and I have previously created a very detailed tutorial for how to sew on three different types of buttons. There's a link on screen now and in, the, and in the down bar below on YouTube. However, that video tutorial featured buttons that were sewn onto woven garments, garments made from woven fabric, as opposed to knitted items. And many viewers got in touch asking me how I did things differently when I was sewing buttons onto cardigans and other knitted items. So this video tutorial shows a very basic method of sewing buttons onto garments that I have used for all three of the garments here and it's a very no frills simple approach that's really suitable when you've got a knitted fabric that is very stable especially when it's been knit out of wool and when it's been knit at quite a close gauge a tight gauge. The main question that I'd like to address is is it different when you're sewing buttons on knitted fabric that stretches as opposed to woven fabric that is much more stable? And the answer of course is it depends. So the method that I'm showing today is very very simple and is actually pretty much the same as what I do with woven garments with a few exceptions, you know, with a few things that you need to note along the way. However, there are other methods that I will cover in future videos, so please keep an eye out for that. It's simply my basic go-to method that I've actually done most of all on nearly all of the garments that I've made, um, if not all of the garments that I've knitted. So it's very tried and tested, it's very simple, um, and I hope that you enjoy the tutorial. This is a very basic method of sewing buttons onto knitwear that I use most commonly and it's especially suitable when the fabric that you're sewing the buttons onto is really stable. So the example I've got is this garment which is knit from a blend of wool and alpaca but it's been knit very tightly and as you can see it's got fantastic memory. Um, it feels pretty robust, it's not particularly drapey, I know it's going to stay in shape. And the button band here was created um, with a seam down the front of the garment so there's an extra bit of stability there so when I've sewn in the buttons um, even though the fabric might pull slightly it's not going to go very very far because it's all anchored down by this seam. For this tutorial I will be sewing buttons onto this garment which is a little baby cardigan that I have knitted up and this garment has its button bands constructed in a different way from that pink sweater because there is no seam and instead the button bands were simply knit in with the fabric. Now this might mean that the button bands are slightly less secure, perhaps slightly less stable, and you do have the option to stabilise the button band by sewing in a piece of tape or ribbon onto the wrong side. However, I've decided not to do that on this occasion, and that again is to do with the properties of the fabric, because being knit out of 100% wool um, and DK weight, double knitting wool, the fabric is, is simply, it's very secure, it's very strong. Again, it's got a great memory, um, which is the stretch retention. So I'm confident that it's not gonna just stretch out of place. Additionally, the buttons that I have chosen for this garment are made of plastic. They're fairly large. Um, they're about two centimeters across, just underneath an inch, but they're very, very lightweight, and so I believe that they're not going to cause any undue stress on the garment, on the fabric. So I think it's safe to go for a very, very basic method of sewing in a button here. So I've selected these buttons out of my button tin. They were things that I already had lying around at home. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is check that you've got enough buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six and I've got exactly six. And what I do normally do as well is sew in an extra button on the inside, at least one, especially when giving it as gifts. So I don't have um, a seventh button because they've come out of my button tin, but I'll find something as well to sew in that's similar enough. And then the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is to check that the buttons fit through the buttonhole just by passing it through. It shouldn't feel like a strain, but also it shouldn't just fall through too easily, which might indicate that it's too small. 
So now that I know that my buttons are going to fit, I'm pretty much ready to go. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be needing a pair of snips, um, a needle, which I've got in my needle book here, a reel of thread. Um, I generally like to sew on buttons with a contrasting colour thread. So I've gone for this very cheery chestnut brown cotton thread and my trusty thimble. Um, I've misplaced my block of sewing beeswax so I've just got an old beeswax candle with which to wax the thread. And these buttons that I'm using here now have got two holes so I'll just be demonstrating how I sew those on very simply but if you'd like more details and more guidance for sewing on different types of buttons including four hole buttons and shank buttons do check out my other button sewing tutorial um, which I demonstrated on woven fabric rather than knitted fabric but the principles remain the same. So I'll just start by grabbing a needle, um, not too big, not too small. I've got a lot of leather needles in my needle case so I need to make sure that I don't pick the wrong ones out. And now I'm going to pull out a length of thread double. So it's been pulled out double off the reel of thread all the way to the end. And then I'm going to thread up my needle double so that when I even out the threads, so I'm going to be sewing on my button with four threads so that it's extra thick, extra strong and also so that it goes quickly. And so that I can stitch in these four threads nice and smoothly without any tangles or knots, I'm just going to run it along my beeswax candle, block of beeswax, a couple of times will do. Put that away because I won't need it for now. So my needle's all ready to go and the next thing now is to mark up where the buttons are going to sit. So I'll just be using my ordinary sewing pins for this. You could use safety pins if you have some small ones. I've only got giant ones at the moment so I probably won't use those. Um, and you could also use those very blunt sewing pins that have been designed for knitters. But as always, I like to keep things simple and I like to use the same equipment for as many purposes as possible. So I'm just going to use my bog standard sewing pins. And so what I need to do is to get my cardigan really flat on the table. So obviously this is really easy to demonstrate with a baby cardigan, but it's exactly the same principle if you were sewing buttons onto an adult cardigan. And I have blocked this garment, but because the button band is in garter stitch and the body of the sweater is in stocking stitch, there's a slight difference in gauge which causes the button band to ride up. So this is a baby garment and also it's a gift, so I'm not being too worried about that. I guess the way to fix that would be whilst you're knitting to add in a couple of short rows at the top and bottom. Um, but on the top it doesn't really matter because it means that it curves down slightly at the throat so that's a good thing and at the bottom it does ride up. Now I did block this garment but it's still riding up despite that so there's not really a lot I can do however I just bringing that up because when we're pinning in the buttons we need to make sure that we are sewing them on evenly, evenly spaced so if you're um, button band is riding up quite a lot at the bottom you do need to make sure that you're pulling it down and evening it out so we're just smoothing down the fabric there and I think that that is okay I know that if I pull it down together it's aligned and then all I'm going to do is with my buttonhole pop in a little pin horizontally so that I know where it needs to sit. So all of those pins are now in. Um, if you wanted you could go in with a tape measure and double check that they are the same distance apart but I can do this by eye and I see that they're totally fine. And then this is where using a safety pin might actually be a bit more hand handy because now that we're going to be sewing on the buttons we're going to be manhandling this fabric a lot more so you need to just be careful that the pins don't fall out. 
carefully lifting this up and as you can see occasionally I have caught the fabric underneath so I'm just very carefully lifting that off and if my pin has gone into the fabric underneath I'm just very carefully repositioning it um, and then I'm going to go ahead and push my pins all the way down into the fabric to make sure that they are nice and secure and that they're not going to move around. So the next step is to get started sewing on the buttons and there are different schools of thought in terms of the way that you should approach this. Um, some people say start in the middle and work your way out, other people say start at the top and make your way to the bottom. don't think I've ever heard bottom to top. Um, but basically what you need to be careful of as you're sewing on the buttons is that whilst you're sewing your hands are slightly manipulating the fabric and it can have a tendency to push and pull the fabric which means that the button might be positioned slightly higher or slightly lower so as you're sewing on you need to be double checking that the that they're still in the right position otherwise you might end up with them all kind of slightly shifting too high and then by the time you get to the bottom you might end up with too large a swatch of fabric or the other way around they might all end up becoming slightly larger and larger and you might end up with a very small one at the bottom so I think that's why the kind of inside out method um, might be advocated so that you can keep double checking evenly spaced on each side um, so that's what I'm going to go for now actually so I've got six Again, just making sure that I'm happy with the placement of the pins. And when I'm sewing my first button on, um, that's going to set the vertical position for the rest of my sewing. So I need to make sure that I make a mental note of exactly how far in I'm going into the button band. And whilst we're talking about that, that's a really great question because the hole the button hole is positioned exactly in the middle um, of the buttonhole band which suggests that when it comes to the button stand the button ought also to be in the middle however this is knitted fabric and so what tends to happen is that when there's a body underneath these buttonholes the curvature of the body pushes the button stand up and slightly away from each other and you might end up with a gap. Um, I'm sure that you might have noticed this on knitted cardigans before, there might be a slight gap in the middle of the button stand. So what you need to do is you need to preempt that gap happening and sew it slightly to one side. Sometimes when you're sewing it slightly to one side it looks very very exaggerated and asymmetrical but trust me and just go with it because this button hole is again it's stretchy fabric and it's going to be opening up with wear right so you want to be able to have as much of the button stand underneath so that when it's stretching out you're not seeing the body underneath or the garment or the skin but you're just seeing more knitted fabric so I'm going to be stitching exactly one stitch in from the side and I've got a helpful garter stitch bump there so that I can align it really easily but just just make a mental note and as I do that I'll take my pin out so that it doesn't get lost and I'll just start with securing my thread and I'm not going to make a knot and I'm stitching around the knitted stitch very carefully and I'm making sure that my needle isn't going into the knitted um, yarn itself it's just going around the yarn and around the stitch so I'll do that a few times sometimes you can't help it and your needle does go into the actual um, yarn but see if you can try and avoid it um, it just stops you weakening the thread of the yarn basically and I've just gone around two times and as you can see I'm pulling and it's really secure so there's no knot needed and then time to stitch in the button I'm just going through the holes and taking a stitch into the same place as you can see I'm pulling the thread through by looping it around my handy thumb I'm always grateful for opposable thumbs. And then I'm just being careful on this first stitch that I'm not pulling the button 
completely flat against the fabric, I am leaving a little small gap. And this is because I'm going to create a small shank. And it's like a stem underneath the button. And what it does is create space for the buttonhole to sit underneath it so that there won't be any wear or strain on the fabric at all, which is especially important for knitted fabric because its nature is that it's stretchy. So because I've got so many threads, as you can see, it wants to tangle up, so you just need to make sure that it stays straight. And then, oh, <laughs> this is a real life demonstration, so you can see how it really works out. And then after I've taken about three or four rounds into the button, I am going round and round and round underneath the button, going round the shank until I end up at the bottom. End up at the bottom and then I'm going into the fabric, coming out on the wrong side, just double checking, got a stray thread there but that's from the beginning so that's okay. And then again I'm just stitching a few times in in order to secure it. And that's done and I'll just trim my initial threads away because they were a bit long, a bit of thread allowance. Okay so that's my first button done and as you can see it does feel like it's quite wonky because it's all the way to one side and it looks like it's almost, because it's only one stitch down, it's almost on the stockingette side of the fabric. But I'm just going to demonstrate this for you now. When I button that closed, when the body is wearing it, it's going to pull out. And it's these gaps in between the bottom where you might glimpse the flesh. So although it might seem slightly asymmetric, I'm confident that when all said and done, it's going to look absolutely fine. But obviously, you know, this kind of thing is quite individual, it's up to you. And of course, you might very well find your own way of doing this. So now I'm going to stitch in my next button. So I've gone down to where the pin was positioned and I've remembered that I'm one stitch across. So I'll secure my thread there. And now I'm going to proceed to do exactly the same thing to stitch the next button down. So I'm going to stitch it in a few times, leaving a small gap and then take the thread round and round and round to create the shank. So that's two buttons in. And as you're stitching, particularly with these two whole buttons, you just want to keep an eye on the direction that the button has been stitched in. So here hopefully you can see that the thread has gone in vertically down the button placket on both of them. So I just need to make sure that they are all going to be the same. So it's nice and even and matchy matchy. So I'll just go ahead and sew in my third button now. And after I've done my third button, this is when we need to start double checking the alignment of the buttonholes in case they've started migrating up or down very, very slightly. It only needs to be a tiny, tiny movement, like less than an eighth of an inch, less than two millimetres, and it can start to throw things off balance. So buttoning them up. I need to make sure that this buttonhole comes up high enough. So this one at the top actually needs to be positioned a fraction higher than what I had it. 
This one down here looks fine. And this one down here is now coming up very slightly too high. That looks a bit better. So now I'll just get on with stitching the last three buttons down. I've now sewn on all of the buttons onto my button placket and I just wanted to repeat that as I was stitching on every button I was re-buttoning up and double checking that they were still in alignment and I did actually have to reposition my pins um, several times because the fabric had just shifted around. Um, so it's really important that you take the time, the time to do that, otherwise your buttons are going to end up kind of a little bit jiggly and not perfectly aligned. And as I was doing that, I was doing several things, you know, I was lining it up, I was checking that the horizontal line across the ribbing here and here was in place. And at times when it came to the very last one, I did also count the number of garter stitch ridges and measure that against the button holes on the other side. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is to stitch on a spare button on the inside. This is just a little little something that I enjoy doing. And as I said, I couldn't find the exact same button in my button tin, although I did have a good rummage. So I'm just going to go for something that is roughly the same colour, even though it's not the same button. Um, just as it's literally as a as a precaution um, in case a button happens to fall off and get lost um, there's just something there and I'm going to do this with only two threads um, rather than the four because it doesn't have to be on as securely and also because I had a little bit of thread left over in my needle so I just pulled that down and made use of it it didn't seem like any point of throwing it away so as I stitch on this last extra button, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about my use of a thimble. Um, I've been sewing with a thimble for a really long time now. When I first started to sew as a kiddie, I couldn't get the hang of it at all. And it was only when I went to university to study costume making um, professionally that I was told by lots of you know professionals that it was really important to wear one. And I wonder if it's something that people who do a lot of sewing and dressmaking are very comfortable doing and perhaps knitters who just sew on the odd button or do the odd you know patch around the house maybe aren't as familiar with but I really encourage you to um, get into the habit of wearing a thimble. In fact I wear my thimble so much that it has in a way become part of my body because I have a small callus on my knuckle which comes from the edge of the thimble rubbing against the flesh and it's made that little bump that you also get from um, you know writing with a pen or a pencil too. And the reason that it's so important to wear a thimble is because it protects the soft flesh of your finger from the um, contact with the hard implement, in this case a needle. So when I'm holding the needle, I'm using my thumb and my forefinger and I do that to position it really precisely. And then what happens is that this third finger comes in with a sweeping action behind and pushes the needle in. So there's always that kind of forces hitting against the metal of the thimble um, as opposed to the soft fleshy part of my fingertips. And I think that it's really worth pointing this out, even in sort of domestic basic stitching even in like amateur stitching because I think it's really important to protect our body both in the kind of smaller instances like this you know trying to avoid building up too many big calluses but also in the larger instances like posture and you know stretching and stuff more generally so I just wanted to highlight that for you. Um, you can get leather thimbles which are meant to avoid getting the sort of thimble bump and, on your finger but um, I've personally found those difficult to use and I'm quite accustomed to using my metal one. So I'm just going to stitch this extra button in discreetly down the side of the inside and as you can see I'm using my thumb and my forefinger to push the needle in and then my middle finger comes sweeping across to secure that to secure that stitch and now I'm taking it through the button and again only positioning it with my thumb and forefinger and then it's my thimble that's doing this pushing action. And because this is a spare button I'm, I'm not um, 
stitching it on too securely it's it's kind of rough as long as it doesn't fall off and you know the baby doesn't eat it we're quite fine I think um, and then just making sure that my stitches are quite discreet on the other side which is fine and I'll just go round and round a few times just as a way of securing it and I'm just stitching into the thread of the button again just as a means to secure it I'm taking my needle through the loop that's created as a way of forming a type of knot just do that one more time so that you can see the thimble so my third finger is right underneath my thumb and forefinger and it's just doing that pushing action on the end of the needle. And that's that. And because this garment is going to a baby, um, hopefully a six month year old baby will fit it, I'm just gonna do a double check by pulling all of the buttons to make sure that they're very secure, including the one on the inside. And then I'll just check against that to make sure that no stitches are obviously popping out. I think it's okay. So that's it for today. All the buttons are on and the cardigan is ready to be packed up and sent to the recipient. I hope that they like it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Do leave me a comment down below and let me know if you try it and if you have success and if you find anything else new out along the way. And if you have your own method and ways of sewing on buttons onto knitted items um, and if you've got your own tips and tricks and things that you've figured out, please do drop me a comment and let me know because I'd be really interested in hearing about other methods and kind of new ways of doing things. It's always so lovely to hear from viewers and I really feel like we've created a lovely community around the and stitchery. So if you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. The Crimson Stitchery features a regular fortnightly craft podcast or vlog where I talk about everything that I've been doing in knitting, sewing, mending and just generally making all things that are beautiful and useful. Thanks so much for watching, take care, bye bye.